Welcome back. Well, our weather absolutely perfect and only getting better and a little bit cooler. 92 the high today, mid 80s tomorrow. Tonight, low to mid 60s. Tomorrow night, perhaps upper 50s. And it's all that dry air working its way in uh, behind Hurricane Milton. And hopefully that drier air interrupts the process because Milton off the charts today. So let's get over to the key wall. Look at that dry air across the region. Wall to wall sunshine in our forecast. In fact, I don't see any rain for us at least in the next 10 to 14 days. Meanwhile, we see our low pressure system out here in the Gulf of Mexico where the radars can detect the rain already. Some tropical showers streaming across Florida and it will pick up a little bit more so tomorrow and then look out for Wednesday into Wednesday night. Here's a 24 hour loop of uh, uh, Milton here going from uh, pretty much a tropical storm to a major category five storm and notice one you see how it wobbles right along this latitude line in the last few frames. But notice the size of the eye. It was 30 miles last night. It was eight miles earlier and getting smaller. And essentially, it can only hold that size for a small period of time. So the inner eye wall collapses. Then another eye wall develops around the outside of that. And that's what we may be seeing now. And then that gradually constricts. And that's what happens once you get to a mature Category 5 hurricane. And Category 5s don't stay 5s so for much longer than 12 to 24 hours. We'll see how it plays out and if there's any interactions with the land with the Yucatan. But the bottom line, 180 mile per hour winds right now moving to the east at about 10. Pressure, I just checked the latest coming out of the Hurricane Hunters. It's below 900 millibars. Now, mind you, you go back to Hurricane Katrina, that was 901 millibars. Rita was 898 and Wilma, the same year in 05, went down to 882 millibars. Hopefully we don't get that low, but this is a very intense rain record breaking storm and unfortunately it's going to be heading for areas that have been pounded by Helene pounded two years ago by Ian. This one's going to be a large category three at landfall more than likely bringing hurricane force winds across the entire Florida Peninsula with time and probably coming in as a three but it's going to have a large wind field so a large hurricane warning area for uh, almost half of Florida even uh, these watches on the east coast of Florida may go to warnings as I do think because it'll be moving quickly in enough. This will carry better than hurricane force winds across the entire peninsula. Tropical storm warnings farther north and south and storm surge. This is going to be worse than Helene by a magnitude of at least two, especially as you get into portions of Tampa Bay and all the way down to Fort Myers still recovering from Ian. So horrible situation setting up with at least a 10 to 15 foot surge uh, from Tampa on down to uh, just north of Fort Myers, Fort Myers, six to 10 feet, and you can see lower amounts as you get farther to the north. Here's the graph model with the National Hurricane Center forecast track. You can see how well the graph model is verifying with respect to where the storm is going to be. And as it goes through the eye wall cycle replacements, it's going to wobble back and forth and people misinterpret. Oh, it's turning north. No, then it's going to turn south. But look where it all ends up after all is said and done right around the Tampa St. Pete area and then moving off to the east. And with it, it's going to bring that tremendous storm surge and then hurricane force wind gusts. This is an early model run of the graph model. I think it may be underdoing some of the wind gusts, but you see those winds reaching the 90, 100 mile an hour range, Sarasota to the Tampa area. And then Orlando probably will see some hurricane force winds all the way to the east coast of Florida before things settle down. So rough weather ahead for our friends to the east. Meanwhile, for us, you couldn't ask for nicer temperatures, low to mid 60s, upper 50s, northern portions of Acadiana. Then tomorrow afternoon, we'll get into the low to mid 80s. A nice breeze out of the north northeast it's just going to be a lovely day and then tomorrow night how about this the air conditioner may get a break mid to upper 50s across the region and then as we head into wednesday afternoon more mid 80s and our weather pattern looks like cruise control from here on out so 63 the overnight low tonight with crystal clear skies look for a crescent moon and venus is the evening star now and it's getting brighter as well wall to wall sunshine tomorrow with a nice breeze will go 84 for your projected high and as we move through the 10 day forecast. Lots of suns on here. This one's suitable for framing uh, temperatures warm again during the day, but at night and morning hours, it feels good. And then hopefully another front a week from tomorrow. That's it for weather for now. We'll have more coming up a little later on.